Hello there, my name is Bruce from Brankus Creations and thank you very much for joining me in this live stream. First live stream I have done in a while and for that I apologize. I have been very, very busy. I am a web developer and that's my day job and that has just been really busy for me lately. I think people are working on a lot of Christmas projects and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, um, I'm gonna quickly say hello to folks. I'm gonna say hello to Steve from Mac84, Jack68K, Apple's Anonymous, uh, uh, Frank S, Enzo Fitzhume, um, Jeremy's Vintage Hillbilly Shack, um, Sean from Action Retro is here. I'll have to mention something about him in a moment. Um, have I got everyone? Have I got everyone? Dana, hello Dana, how are you? I haven't spoken to you in ages. Uh, did I say hello Enzo? If I didn't, hello Enzo. Um, big bad biologist, big bad bench, g'day g'day. Joe is here, hello Joe. Um, okay, so, uh, very quickly, just want to say a big thank you to Sean, Sean from Action Retro, uh, for being a guest on, uh, our new show, Startup Disc is Full. Uh, if you haven't seen the channel, please check it out. There are five episodes on there. After watching one, you'd wonder why we came back, but we did. And there are now five episodes there, and, uh, Sean was a guest on our episode, uh, last week, which we did on Linux. Um, so, uh, and it was a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah. Now, we did make a pledge with that channel that when we got to 100 subscribers, we would do our next show as a live stream. And we just reached 100 subscribers, so we will be doing our next show as a live stream. And that. <coughs> um, so, DJ Craze, hello there. Um, uh, Linux is for nerds. We all know that, Sean. Um, so uh, a couple of things that I'll just make mention of, I'll try and get through these fairly quickly so we can get into this chaos on my bench. Um, I have got a new lapel microphone. Uh, please let me know if there are any problems with the sound or anything like that. It sounds exactly the same as the old one. It's just a slightly different design. It's designed uh, a little bit better as a lapel microphone. Uh, it's designed so that the microphone faces outwards, outwards, so it gets more it gets it just gets theoretically better sound so yeah hello dave how's it going uh jared burma hello lucas elliott hello oh and sorry yes thank you thank you for commenting on the shirt corbin dallas taxi service new york um obviously a reference to uh fifth element uh for people who haven't seen the film what's wrong with you um i do quite like my uh esoteric t-shirts i like my t-shirts that make a reference to movies and uh, a lot of people get get them. Some some of them are a little bit too esoteric, and people look at them and go, "What? What's that?" Um, so um, Adam Sakalarides, Sakalarides. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I apologise for what I just did to your surname. But hello and welcome. Um, <coughs> okay, so um, yes, new lapel microphone. Uh, another thing is I've got a couple of really cool things on their way to me at the moment. So one of them is from Kay Koba, um, one of one of the many true gentlemen of this uh, vintage computer um, sort of uh, community. Uh, he uh, is sending me uh, these little four megabyte memory module things. They're essentially just a PCB, but the idea is that you, um, if you have any leftover 16 megabyte SIMs, 72 pin 16 megabyte SIMs. They use the same chips as four megabyte SIMs. So on a 72 pin chip, a 16 megabyte SIM, it's like, well, what am I gonna do with that? You know, I've got the 64s and 32s and stuff. So what am I gonna do with a 16? I've actually got a few eights. Um, and, uh, and so you can take the chips off a 72, a working 72 pin SIM and put them onto this a little 30 pin SIM to make a four megabyte SIM. And four megabyte SIMs are really useful to have because if you're looking at a Macintosh Color Classic, and I think Classic 2, I think, if you want to top them out to their maximum amount of RAM of 10 megabytes, you use four megabyte SIMs. They're the best things to do. So, um, so they're coming. Uh, and then I will, of course, do a video on that when they arrive. So that's something to look forward to. I've also got something very special coming from Boll, um, from Germany. For those of you who uh, you know, might know who Boll is, I've got something coming out and that's gonna be a video as well. And I am pretty freaking excited about that one, I have to say. So that is coming up. Hello, Adam. 
Um, so yeah, um, yeah, that's that's coming soon. Um, I have also been very, very busy working on another project for another YouTube video, which will be coming out soon. And I have been building an ultrasonic cleaner, a big one, a 42 liter one. So uh, that is something that's coming. It is essentially built. I'm going to be doing some testing with it this afternoon, running at um, five sixths of uh, its full uh, ultrasonic cleaning power. I can't do six sixths. I can't do 100% power until uh, I film something because I'm making a video of it. I have to film this stuff. And of course, filming does get in the way of productivity. When you're building things, it's like, oh, I'm going to go build this. And you think, oh, no, hang on. I'm going to set up a camera and film me building that thing. So um, so anyhow, I'm just saving. Uh, I'm going I'm to do a little bit of filming. And then, yeah, I'm going to be testing this ultrasonic cleaner out. I've already done some early tests running at around about 50% capacity or 50% power, and I've been cleaning uh, saucepans, frying pans, um, big stuff. So, yeah. Max is here. Hello there, Max. Um, Max, I need to organise a time to catch up with you and dump this Indigo iMac um, with you so you can take it away and part it out or try and fix it or whatever you want to do with it. So, uh, uh what is a saucepan? A saucepan. Saucepan. Um, uh, so, um, yeah. So that's, uh, that's, that's coming. Um, uh, so I hope everyone enjoys that. I've put an awful lot of work into this video and into this particular device that I'm building. And I hope it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be coming out. I'm waiting for one part to come from China. Um, and they've said it's going to come out in January, beginning of January. Let's hope if it doesn't, if it doesn't come out in time, I'll probably just fudge something together for the video. Um, I finally moved house. I might have time this week. Awesome. Great to hear. Um, 1.21 gigawatts. Uh, sorry. I just, I see that you have to say it, don't you? Um, you have something similar coming from Bowl. Yes, I know. But, but. You're not allowed to do a video on it until I have. That's the rules. Do you know why that's the rules? Because that I told you. I told you about it. So, I mean, I know you knew it was coming, but I told you it was ready. So, um, so uh, what's a bowl? Bowl is, uh, it's not actually his real name. Not real name. It's the name he goes by. Um, and he is a German uh, dude who has done some pretty amazing stuff. One of the things he, he did was he recreated a Macintosh SE30 logic board, but he didn't do it in the way that Kai did the SE and the Classic, where he basically got an old board and just wiped off all the, um, uh, you know, sort of the mask and then scanned it and then recreated it, you know, sort of line for line. He re-engineered it, um, based on the schematic diagram, so which is a pretty darn impressive thing to do. So he took, um, uh, this is something we're going to talk about with the SE30 in a moment. Uh, he took what is ultimately a six layer board and he turned it into a four layer board um, and just sort of kind of redesigned it, moved a few things around, uh, did some really cool stuff on it. I think he even made it so that you can solder the ROM straight onto the board so you don't need to use a ROM SIM socket. Because to be honest, that ROM SIM socket is a bit of a weak point on these. Um, I've had lots of times where, you know, you start the computer up and you get the, um, you get the, uh, what do you call it? The SIM or CMAC screen. You give the little ROM SIM a wiggle and away she goes, so. Ah, oh, Retro Techie, hello. Someone told me you were streaming. Are you streaming? Are you streaming and talking to me at the same time? If you are, that's impressive. Uh, my Color SE30 mod is just awaiting the arrival of one, oh, wow, one adapter. How, and that is very, very good. Now, very quickly. Also, I mentioned Sean before. I'm going to mention Sean again. He just released a video where he has um, got some color situation happening on his wacky SE30. So this is the... the this is the original cursed SE30, I think, wasn't it, Sean? Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, this is the one that had uh, someone had hacked in a jazz drive and a tray loading CD-ROM uh, and a whole stack of speakers for some unknown reason. Um, and Sean has taken that a step further. He's now got it in a clear case. He has put in a slot loading CD-ROM drive. 
um, put in a different power supply. So there's a lot been done to that uh, SE30. But, uh, oh, and it's been upgraded to an 040, which is phew. Um, and uh, yeah, so, and as usual with Sean's video, the, um, uh, the benchmark that he uses is Wolfenstein 3D. So, um, yeah, not now, you're watching me, but later, go check that video out. It's well worth looking at. Um, and of course, the very important thing I must mention to people, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to uh, the other channel we've created recently, Startup Disk is Full Tech Chat. It is very similar to the Mac Yak Chat that we do, except that it is fewer people and it is pre-recorded and it is broad tech discussion rather than just about Macs. In actual fact, it's nothing like Mac Yak. Nothing like it at all. It's completely different. I just went and listed all those things and I was like, nothing like Mac Yak at all. So, um, Right, let's have a look at this. I'm going to just change camera views. We're going to go to the top view for this one. We have got uh, a little stray piece of wire um, and a little bit of microscope in the way. There we go. Oh, that's the other thing. I've also got another microscope on its way out to me. I'm going to be doing a review video of, and it's going to be, I think, potentially a good budget alternative to the big microscope I use. So I'll be doing a full unboxing review of that video. That's coming fairly soon, and we'll... Uh, We'll see how that all goes. So, uh, Thomas Armstrong is here. Hello there. Um, love to just get an SE30 working. This board is mine. I traded this for some services. So basically what happened is someone has sent me a Mac 2. This is going to be done in another live stream. Someone sent me a Mac 2 to recap. And uh, I am going to do that. And in return for... And I'm put in some new uh, battery holders and stuff like that. because so I've got a... Uh, 3D print STL file for a, a battery holder for the Mac 2 because the spacing's a little bit out for the standard battery holders. So, um, so you know, and of course it has the double battery as well. So I will be uh, recapping that, obviously another video, but in return for the recapping, he gave me this dead SE30 board and a couple of, excuse me, new bus cards. Uh, a, I believe one is a grayscale um, uh, display card, and the other one is an uh, eMachines color one. Now, I haven't had a chance to really plug them in and test them yet. That's another thing for this afternoon, so afterwards. I can't do that sort of testing here. There's literally not enough room on the bench. So, um, so this is the Macintosh SE30, and it is in a pretty bad way. Um, anyone who has a keen eye for SE30s, Wayne 3225, hello there. I'm doing very well. I hope you're doing well as well, as well as well. And Lazy Blue Goat, hello there. Just got my SE30 working, recap and three broken traces. Also got a good uh, tube for it with no burning. That's fantastic. That is really good to hear. It's, it's interesting, actually. I don't see that many burned in Macs. And maybe it's because the burned in ones have been thrown away or something like that. And people only held on to the ones that don't have burn in. But I literally, I don't have a single compact Mac with burn in. And I've got a lot of compact Macs. So, you know, hello classic, hello classic, hello plus, hello SE30. That's just in here. Oh, hello, classic. Oh, hello, classic. Hello, classic. Hello, classic. That's just in here. Um, and this is, this is just a showroom. You should sit at a warehouse. So anyhow, that's another story. <coughs> um, plenty of burned in CRTs for you. <laughs> you can keep them. Um, so, um, righty. I just need to check something here. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Just checking on things. Oh, you know what I haven't done today? There are two things I haven't done, but we'll just start with the first one first, eh? We'll do a little bit of the old... Smash that like button. Yeah, please smash that like button if you uh, feel compelled to do so. I don't do any damage to your keyboard, but, you know, smash it anyway. Or your mouse. Um... What else? Uh, yes, I will, of course, be talking about um, a multimeter fairly soon, but we'll get back to that a little bit later, because a little bit later a multimeter will probably be needed. Where on earth is my multimeter? Uh, I've been doing a lot of work outside, so uh, things have been moved around. Uh, it can't be too far away. I'm lost without the multimeter. Lost, I tells you. Um, so, anyhow, uh, here's the SE30. Now, looking at this, just at a glance, you probably can't see it, from this view, and I apologize for that. But at a glance, we can see a few things. As I say, if you have a keen eye for SE30s, you'll notice two things. First of all, this is the later revision of the SE30 board. The earlier one had a gold uh, socketed CPU here. So this would this chip would actually sit in a socket. 
so you could remove it if you wanted to. Uh, the later versions have this one here soldered onto the board and it's this darker color. Some of them are just smooth. This one's got a little ridge on it, but this basically that's soldered in. Uh, the other thing with this is the capacitor. This little capacitor here is on this, it's not here at the moment, it's fallen off, but if it was here, it would be there. And uh, it, in the earlier revision of the board, this capacitor lives on this side of the ROM slot. It's over here. So if you see the uh, capacitor living down here, you know you've got the earlier revision of the board. If you see it here, you've got the later revision of the board. Um, nom, nom, nom. Been a server of some sort. You could read most of the text. Yeah. Well, that's the that's the thing, isn't it? The ones that get the worst burn in were the ones that were set up as a server. I uh, many 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 years ago. I mean, we're talking probably about 1993, 94, something like that. I used to work uh, doing tech support for a company, and um, we one of our clients was uh, an advertising agency, and they had a file server set up using. Um, uh, was it AUX? No, what's what's the Apple Linuxy thing? Was that AUX? I think. Sean would know. Um, uh, not Linux, Unix. Unix. Did I say Linux or Unix? I meant Unix. Um, and they had an SE30 powering that. I remember at the time because every now and again you'd go into this room, this room that was kept cool, and there would be this little SE30 sitting there um, powering a file server. And, uh, you know, every now and again I had to go in there and do stuff to it, but, you know. Uh, yes, AUX, there we go. Um, so, uh, so anyhow, I didn't know anything about Unix at the time. I was literally told to go in there and type this command and then press enter, and that was what I used to have to do. Uh, I can't even remember what the command was or what it did or anything like that, but it was a little SE30, and I bet you that SE30 would have some of the worst burn in you would ever see, because that's all it did, it just sat there. Um, they could have just turned the brightness down, couldn't they? But no. Um, all right, so... Uh, I mentioned before, if you have a keen eye about the SE30, you might actually notice something a little bit odd, and that's this little guy here. This is a Borns resistor. Um, uh, this Borns resistor just sort of, for some reason, Borns resistors wake up forgetting who they are and then find out they're like some sort of assassin. Uh, it's just a joke there. It's a little um, Born identity joke there, so sorry about that. Um, this should actually be travelling that way. This is actually the wrong way around, so it's been knocked or something, and all the pins are broke. All the pins are broke, so yeah. Um, so yep, yeah, that's a bit of a problem. Uh, I can see rust all around here. Um, we'll have a look at this in the microscope in a minute. Uh, this here is an absolute corrosion catastrophe. Uh, so we've got a lot of cleaning up to do. Now, what I do have already in stock, I do have replacement um, uh, crystals. Uh, that's a, a oscillator, crystal oscillator. That's for the real-time clock. I have replacement ones of those. This is a real-time clock chip. I have replacement ones of those. These are diodes. I have replacement ones of these. These here are the um, uh, multiplexes, ra uh, RAM multiplexes. I have replacements of these. What I do not have replacements for are these Borns resistors. Now, I might be able to raid them from another computer. I'll have to see. I don't have any SE30 donor boards, um, but it uh, be interesting to see. I mean, of course, I can always borrow them borrow them from my other SE30 board just for the purpose of getting it working, but these are things that are going to have to get sorted out. Is this a client's board or a parts board? This is my board, and it is, it's not a parts board. I am going to try and repair it. I have a Macintosh SE, and I'm thinking of putting this inside the SE, so I would have two SE30s, two SE30s. Uh, maybe one to do funky things with, like Sean has done, and one to keep as stock, that sort of thing. Um, I, I can't really resist getting another SE30 working, you know what I mean? They're just, I just love them. They're wonderful things. Uh, okay, so, um, yes, uh, this, so this is, yes, I say, this is not a client's board. This is mine. This is one that I got as a trade for, uh, for services. So I got this board and a couple of new bus cards in return for recapping a board. So, um, um AUX not. Ooks. <laughs> Orcs. <laughs> uh, Orcs. <laughs> Sorry, yes, I've always called it AUX. So. Javier is curious when his SE30 board will return to the States. That's a, yeah. We should actually have a look at that today as well. Um, 
So the, uh, as I mentioned, as, a, as I started the live stream, one of the big problems I've had lately is business. And I haven't, it's not, it's not even just a matter of me not having time to live stream. I haven't had time to do anything, no repairs, nothing. I've basically just been writing code and, um, uh, and working on the sort of the, uh, the YouTube side projects. That's virtually all I've been doing. So, um, uh, but anyhow, we will get that done. Things are going to quieten down for me soon. I'll end up in the, the Christmas lull and I'll be able to get through all this stuff. I've got so much stuff here to do. Um, so just to remind everyone with Javier's board, where we got to with that, we got it booting, we got it all working. Uh, the only thing that remains is we've got to just run some wires through to the PDS slot. If we were to uh, try and put in a PDS card at the moment, it would not work because there are some data lines that aren't connected up. So I've just basically got to connect those data lines up, get some UV solder mask on there to make it look pretty, and uh, and then I will shoot it back. I still haven't sent back um, uh, Canadian Computer Collector Dan's board either. Um, I am a little on the slack side and I apologise. I finally sent a package to Jay from the House of Moth. Where is Jay from the House of Moth? He's the one always complaining. Angular Momentum, hello. He is the one always complaining to me about whether I'm live streaming, and he's not even here. Doesn't even have the decency to be here. Good golly. Right, let's have a look at the microscope view. And we will first apply a little bit of focus here. Make us all feel better. Not quite so woozy. Um, right, okay. So this is what I was talking about, this little bit of corrosion nightmare here. So this is the capacitor down the bottom. It's very common for this to be yucky um, but this one's particularly yucky uh, i've got a nice big clump of rust here and i expect yeah that's just going to come off there we go nope. this is all just going to come off look at this oh no Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is a board that probably should go into the ultrasonic cleaner. Trady Trev, hello. Uh, Garth, did I say hello to you? If not, hello Garth. Welcome. So let's continue, shall we? Uh, just keep keeping an eye on the chat. So uh, I can see broken traces here. Um, it's one of the, usually the giveaway signs is when you see a little green lump on the top of the trace. And there we go. And they, they were around here. And then when you remove that green lump, you find that it was basically the whole trace. And there's nothing left but a gap. See, when we scrape, this is what we want. We want to end up with this shiny copper like that, shiny. It is cold and windy here. Do you know it's the middle of December? It is summer here. It is supposed to be ridiculously hot, but it is cold and windy. I don't get it. I don't get it. They're toying with us. So all of these gaps here, they're all busted traces. Busted trace, busted trace, busted trace. It's all bad. Hello, Trina. Is the net for model trains that does a superb job of removing corrosion from PCBs? Yes, I've actually seen that little rotary tool. I think um, Jay from the House of Moth even has one. And I've seen it uh, in action, and it's cool. Um, I really should get one. Or at the very least, get something to stick onto my Dremel to make this easier. So at this, at this stage, we're looking at a, a kind of a damage assessment. Uh, this is fine. Uh, this will be fine. We need to, of course, repair these traces. So there's one, two, three, four traces to repair here. This we just need to clean off. It's ugly, but it's fine. Um, I'm pretty sure this will be okay. But we will check to make sure that we've got some continuity through to the other side. Let's flip him over and see what the other side looks like. C 
crappy SSD product. I um I actually love uh, what's his name? Um, oh, God, I've forgotten his name. Um, he doesn't have a forgettable name or anything like that. Just my brain's a bit a bit bad. Um, uh, Ken. Ken from um, C C Computer Clan, crazy C crazy Ken from Computer Clan, Ken, 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 Ken. Um, he did a video on an SSD that he purchased that it was just so ridiculously cheap, you know that it's not going to be right, and then when he got it, uh, it's basically just a very, very small um, SSD that's had firmware modified to make it think it's bigger, um, and uh, yeah. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. That's the old saying. So this here is uh, a via. It goes through to the other side and it is in a pretty ugly state. I want to just suck all that solar out of there. Or as much as I can. Ow. Bernie's, Bernie's, hot Bernie's, Bernie's. Ow. And then... I will get the last bit of this hole and I will drill it through with me Dremel. Come on. Come on. I haven't even got my Dremel connected up here at the moment. You know why? Because I've been using it outside building my ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, run out of the house for a bit. Why does he have to run out of the house? Relatively warm today, even though it's still cooler than usual. Yeah, so for those who don't know, Dana is in Bathurst, which is directly west from me. Um, pretty much directly west from me. Or as we say in this country, Bathurst. Got to do it with an F. You can't do it with a TH. Bathurst. Um, we, there was snow uh, in Victoria a couple of days ago. It's snow in summer. What the? I tells you. <sighs> Near Lithgow. <laughs> so that's another one. Lithgow. <laughs> T-H Lithgow. <laughs> Lithgow. <laughs> oh, I like it. I like it. Uh, I'm just going to check on the cricket scores because I'm a mad cricket fanatic. And, uh, and there's a game of cricket on today. Australia versus South Africa. And so I'm just going to have a quick look here. I've got the game running in the background on my computer. Seven for 205. Let's hope the tail wags. I mean, we're doing a little bit better than South Africa we're doing, but it's certainly not our normal performance. Very disappointing, Australia. Very disappointing. Right. Well, I think we're good to go now. I think I can probably poke a hole through here. Poke, 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 poke. Now cut that out. There we go. There we go. We're through. So, what I have done, look at that, got a nice little, uh, uh, what's that, uh, ER, there we go, George Clooney, right, um, okay, we're over here, and what I did is I just poked a hole through there, so I can then run a wire down onto the other side just in case there's any sort of issues going on there. Um, not sure what to use to clean this up. I mean, I've got all sorts of things that could potentially do it, but I'm sort of feeling like sticking some sort of grindy thing onto the Dremel might be the best way of cleaning that up. Maybe, 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 maybe. All right, over here, got a little bit of rust, but nothing particularly major. I'm not concerned about that. Everything's looking pretty good there. That's nice here as well. All looking pretty good here too. Jay finally arrives after the hassling me to do a live stream for such long time. It finally arrives to my live stream. My goodness, you know we've been going for half an hour, sir. I will tell you, sir. Um, all right. I don't think cricket's a sport. I think he's talking about the tiny green chirpy insect. <laughs> Oh, uh, dear.
Yeah, so uh, anyhow, Mitchell Stark is batting. That's not a good sign, seeing as he's a bowler, but never mind. Um, should watch cricket. You should. It's, uh, it creates a level of excitement. As I've often likened it, imagine you were counting from 10,000 down to 1. So 10,000. 9,999, 9,998. Imagine you were doing that. Uh, now I want you to imagine the sort of the level of excitement you might, might feel when you get down to about 50. That's, that's kind of the level of excitement you get from cricket. So it's about, about that tier. Right, so let's have a little look-see around here. Now this is where it's going to get a little bit ugly because this is where all the battery damage is. That's where, this is ground zero. This is where the battery was. Um, so there's one of the battery terminals there, and the other one is, the other one is, is that it? That seems too far away. Is it? What is it? What is it? Hang on. Um, somewhere around here anyway. Um, now we've got lots of gunk left over. Um, we've got our little twisted eh, Bourne's resistor, or resistor net, as they're sometimes called. So we're gonna see if I can get replacements of those. You can generally still buy these, so I will probably end up actually just buying brand new replacements. I don't see much point in trying to fix these up. That one's pretty ugly too. Let's uh, just see if legs fall off when I start scraping this. So what have we got here? They're all upside down, that makes it hard for me. 22, 22, 22. So I assume that's like 22 ohms, I'm guessing. One oh two, one, no, 102, 201. Oh, there's confusing. Now we've got a little bit of ugliness here on the CPU. I'm not too fussed about that because uh, to be, oh, actually, that's the FPU. Nothing wrong with my brain. Uh, I've got heaps of spares of these. I've got lots of 68882 FPUs. I always keep a decent supply of them because uh, I drop them into customers' boards when they ask me to. When they've got a, ouch, uh, a Color Classic or something like that that has a socket but no FPU in it. Um, that's what I do. Um, golf is for background while you do other things. Yes, I've never really been much into golf. Um, I don't, I mean, I've had lots of friends saying, oh, you'd love it, you'd love it. But yeah, it's just never really, never really, never really. Oh, wow. Look at this. How cool is this? <laughs> One of the things that I will be doing with this board is ultrasonically cleaning it. Um, I don't normally ultrasonically clean it at the beginning because I like to do all the dirty work first and then clean it. But with something like this, one of the main reasons I want to do is I want to get rid of all the busted stuff. A lot of the time when you have boards like this, things are being held together by rust. So I kind of want to clear that all the way. So that if, they're, you know, if they are being held together by rust, the rust will go and they won't be held together anymore. So then I can find the problem rather than thinking that everything's peachy and then later on it will die. This stuff here, this baked on stuff like this, doesn't usually come off very well on the ultrasonic. It might, but we'll see. Got a nice little. These are still readily available. All these SL, LS chips, that you know, they're, they're they're almost all available still. You can just you know jump on and and buy them from. A, at worst, you have to get them from. Um, what's that place called? Um, source UT Source UT Source. We've got sports discussion going on now. William D, have I said hello to you? If not, hello. Uh, okay, alrighty. So, um, I'm kind of getting the feeling like it would be prudent for me to remove this chip because I sort of feel like if there are any traces running underneath it, and there are, going to the PDS slot, they're probably going to be stuffed. Mm. 
Look at those holes, man. And what I happen to know about these is that these holes are vias, and those vias, if they're the ones I think they are, uh, connect to the ROM slot on the inside of the board. So we're going to probably have little traces running on the underside of the board, which is a bit of a poop. So, there are two things that I need to do with this. First of all, I need to prep it. And by that I mean get rid of all this rust, get rid of all of the um, UV mask, expose all of the damage. So that's the first thing we need to do. So essentially we need to identify all the damage. So that's what we've got to do first. Then we have to start repairing the far out damage. You know, I'm doing my best not to swear as I keep looking at this and it keeps getting worse. Um, then once we've exposed all of the problems and located all the problems, this is making a good donor board, this one. Good donor board. Um, we will then, interestingly enough, the diodes are still fine and they usually are the first to go. I mean, fine. And when I say fine, I don't mean pristine, but I mean these would still work. Um... God, look at all these... I mean, this is just trace rot. City. I mean, it's going to take me a long time to fix this. Is it worth it for an SE30? You've got to ask the question. You know, Joe, I'm seriously thinking about abandoning this board and uh, um, finishing Javier's. I really am. <clears throat> K-Mac Vintage, hello. <laughs> Metal wire brush. I do have a wire brush. Um, I, I am very seriously thinking about dremeling this. Um... All right, well, let's rip off some of this crap. I mean, I don't really see much point in keeping these on. They're unhappy. They're gonna have to go. I'm not making any sort of record about what goes where because I've got a perfectly functional SE30 board here. I can just look everything up on that. So, you know, I'll just take this stuff off. And then I'll order some things. One down. These Bourne's resistors always go brown when you apply heat to them. So if yours goes brown when you apply heat to it, that's normal. These are coming off very easily because there wasn't much holding them on. <laughs> uh. Having these not here will make it a lot easier to clean. And of course, having them not here will also allow me to identify any damage traces underneath the component. Better put a heat shield here. I don't want to wreck this sim socket. These F25A, F258, sorry. Uh, they are the multiplexers. RAM multiplexers. Uh, if you're ever working... Oh, that one doesn't look too bad. <laughs> Shouldn't really take it off if it looks alright, should I? That'd just be stupid. Um, what about... Yeah, this one needs to go. We haven't even looked up the top left-hand corner. We're going to do that in a minute. Um, so this one's got to go. And, look, I'm very tempted to just whip off this uh, real-time clock chip as well. And I know it's through hole, but I'm probably still going to use the hot air for this. I 
There we go. And so I do have spears of those, so that's kind of good. These diodes, I mean, look, I may as well come off, eh? Even though the diodes are probably okay, I'll, I'll put new ones on. I just don't see much point in persevering with something scungy like that. Oh, and let's take the old uh, F. Poo off. Because he's got some dead... Um, uh, some dead pins. You can see there's a lot of damage here. There's missing ones up there. No, you can't see that because it's out of camera. Up here, missing, missing. It is one of the good things that a lot of this, well, not a lot, but some of these chips are still available. And thankfully, while there's a demand for them, um, a lot of companies are still trying to find them. They're still trying to source them. Yes, they are faking them as well, and you have to be careful with that. Uh, one of the ways you can tell if you're getting a fake is a lot of the time this printing that you see on the top here, that printing uh, you can wipe off. Um, but I generally buy mine from a reputable source. And as a result, if I do get one that is a fake, I can always take them back or send them back. Look at that. Look at it. Look at it. Look, look, look at it. Just, just, just look at it. Okay. Will you look at it? Okay. Oh, and I've got to take out the little uh, clock as well, a little Y1. The oscillator that oscillates at Joe. Joe, you remember the numbers? I don't remember the numbers. It's got a three in it. Cactus. Yeah, cactus. Cactus is an Aussie term for something being wrecked. So obviously, David Jones is being uh, an Australian. Uh, that's yeah. That's, that's generally what we we say. Oh yeah, no, that's mate. That's cactus. Thirty-two point seven six eight sounds right, Dana. And there it is from Joe as well. Thirty-two thousand seven hundred sixty-eight hertz. Hertz. Always keep those around because. Um, there's logic behind it. So um, if a battery leaks, typically a battery is positioned near the real-time clock chip. And typically the oscillator for the real-time clock is near the battery as well. So when uh, there is battery damage, it's that little oscillator is usually one of the things that gets hit. So I always keep spare ones of those oscillators around because, as I say, and same with these diodes, I keep spares of these diodes as well because they're usually hit too. Um, so it's looking like it's looking a little bearer now, uh, and I'm going to definitely ultrasonic this. Um, we've got so much scrapey scrapey to do. The stuff that's all rusted kind of just comes crunching off. The stuff that's still soldery, you have to kind of you have to melt that off. And this one's got a combination of the two. But essentially, everywhere I look on this, there is trace damage. We don't need no stinking FPU. Come on. Look at it. Look at it. I'm normally a lot more gentle with this sort of stuff, but just because there's so much here, I'm just hitting it pretty hard. So if anyone here with a weak disposition, I apologize. Has anyone here heard of the movie The Meg? More importantly, has anyone here seen the movie The Meg? scalpel in this. Looking a little rough. 
uh, about a megalodon. Yes, that's the one. Oh, do you now? You found it. Did Jay find the Meg? That's awesome. Thank you. Has anyone seen the new Avatar movie? I have not. Um, I, I'm curious. I, I want. I really want a few other people to see it first. I, I, I'll, I, if I'm to be totally honest, um, while I enjoyed the first one, I was a bit baffled as to why it ended up being the highest grossing film of all time. It's not, it's not the sort of film that makes me want to watch it more than once. Watched it and enjoyed it, but it's so like... The, to get those sorts of box office numbers, people had to be going back and doing it again and again. You know, and that. Okay, Australia is all out. Oh no, it's an innings break. No, it's an innings break. Australia 218. Leads by 66 at this stage. It's not a huge lead compared to the God, the last game when we were playing the West Indies. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Um, just going to get rid of some of the f um, solder from some of these ones. See these ones here? So I'm putting a little bit of, of the old uh, Fluxaruni on there. And we're going to remove all the solder, all the lumps of solder there. Um, I, want to, uh, I want to have these all solder free for all my scrapey scrapey. Wake up, wake up, soldering iron. Amazing what heat does, isn't it? Um, did I mention to folks that I did get contacted by Intertech, the Flux company? I think I did. I think I mentioned it in my last live stream. I mentioned it somewhere. I told someone. They uh, reached out to kind of let me know that they're not producing um, counterfeit products and stuff like that. And, and they'd seen my video on Flux and stuff like that. I replied to them and they didn't reply back, so I don't know. Maybe in my email went to spam or something. Uh, what do you reckon, uh, Joe? Do you reckon this one's a lost cause? Is this one that you would work on? If this was yours, Joe, would you try and fix it? Wiggles is one of the finest Australian exports. Some people say Margot Robbie, but no way. The Wiggles for sure. Wake up, Jeff. finish at least this bar. Yes, uh, Dana has always expressed how much she likes uh, when I uh, clean 
uh, clean all the pads and stuff on these boards, you know, get them all looking shiny and new. Uh, this one is a, a bit more challenging than usual. Um, and in all truth, I am going to ultrasonically clean this um, before I do too much more in the way of, uh, of cleaning and trace repairing and stuff, because I just think it will make my life a little bit easier. I'm just going to get the solar out of these holes. People often ask me, how do I get solar out of holes? And I say, well, there are a few different methods, but none of them I would really consider completely, you know, sort of perfect. Um... Uh, typically, I will like to I like to try and get them with a bit sort of more fresh solder in them rather than the old stuff that was originally there. Um, it's often the fresh solder is a little bit easier to remove, flows a little bit more, you know, it's a little bit more fluid. Um, you can try using a solder sucker. Sucker! Um, you can. Try using a solder needle, which is what I may end up doing with this. Sounds like rain. It is rain. Don't like it. I don't like it. I won't have it. I'm not going to stand for it. I'm going to just sit here. I haven't seen too many movies more than once in the cinema, I have to say, just talking, jumping back to movies there for a sec. Um, I think I may have seen Titanic twice. And that was, I think, because I went to see it with someone and then went to see it with someone else. Not sure I necessarily would have gone and seen that twice under different circumstances. Because, you know... Um, that's a long time ago, so it's back before TVs were awesome. These days you want to watch a movie again, you can watch them in your living room with surround sound and all that sort of stuff and junk. Um, and the other one is Jurassic Park. The very first Jurassic Park movie, I actually saw that in the cinema three times and that was very intentional. I loved that movie. I uh, loved the book too. Um, that was a pretty darn good book, that one. Um... There we go. We have cleared the holes, my friends. <laughs> Trady Trev is clearly an Australian. Not many people uh, from other parts of the world know who Pauline Pantsdown is. <laughs> How long does it normally take to clean a board in an ultrasonic cleaner? There's a question I can answer. Uh, it does depend greatly on the uh, state of that board. If you're just cleaning off a little bit of dust and stuff like that, you probably get away with under 10 minutes. Um, you know, maybe five to seven minutes, five to 10 minutes, something like that uh, in there. If, if all we're talking about is just maybe a bit of flux and a bit of dirt. Uh, if you're really talking about crunchy stuff like this, I'm probably going to let this have a good 30 minutes per side in there. So this is probably all in all going to spend about an hour in the cleaner. Because um, I, I really do want this to break away any of these sort of crusty bits because I don't want them there creating the illusion that they are working, um, you know, that they are good. I, everything that is bad, I want to disappear from this board. Um, Boy, we've got a lot of testing to do here. Every single one of these V's is going to have to be tested. And of course, if any of these V's are broken, they al almost all of them here in this region uh, involve having to um, run a wire. Uh, because, uh, interesting thing about the SE30 board, most, a lot of the boards that are out there, they're four layer boards. 
and you have data lines on the top, you have data lines on the bottom, and then inside you have two layers. One is usually a layer for ground, one is a layer for um, power. So, you know, it's your voltage rail. So you've got your four layers there. Um, the SE30, because they were basically cramming, what was it, I think a Mac 2X? They're cramming a Mac 2X into this very small board. Um, they, instead of it being a four layer board, it is a six layer board. So it has the same as before, data lines on the top, data lines on the bottom, and it has a voltage rail and it has a ground rail inside. But then it also has two, um, two layers of data lines in there as well. And in particular, they are ones going to this ROM chip in this area. So any time you see any of these breaks, you know, around these vias, I will probably end up having to, um, you know, do some serious repairage. Just gonna have a look on the other side of this. See all this, see all this crustiness here? Is they meant to look like that? Is they meant to look like that at all? No. Let's go do some pokey pokey stuff. Poke. 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 These are just falling through because everything's corroded. The alkaline of the battery has, um, I guess, dissolved all that solder. Cookie Monster. When your, your problems, battery problems have made their way to this side of the board, it's bad. There's my little hammer. I've got a little hammer here. It's a jeweler's hammer. Uh, because I'm careful. I like to be careful when I'm smashing things. Red leader, hello. Max cell explosion or cat mess. This is a battery bomb. So this is definitely, I mean, it's got cat mess as well, but it is predominantly, the, most of the problems on this are related to a battery. And it's really just gonna come down to how far. I am gonna give up on this fairly soon for today. Not forever. I'm going to call this a bit of an ongoing project, uh, but I just I, these sorts of things you, you got to you got to step away from them every now and again because otherwise you'll lose your marbles. Okay, South Africa are back in and batting again. Let's see if they can do a little bit better than they did in the first innings. So this is a game of Test cricket for those who don't know anything about cricket. Uh, test cricket uh, goes over five days. Uh, we are on to the second day at the moment, and things are moving very, very quickly because of the rather terrible batting performances, or you could say the very good bowling performances, one or the other. Um, yeah. And uh, and there's no way this one's going to go for five days. I just can't see it. I reckon this one will go for three, maybe four. There is a weird noise. I don't know where it's coming from. Uh -oh. Do do do. Do do do. I want all of these vias to be clear. Now let's be clear. I'll probably have to drill this one. Uh, Compaq's first desktop PC and was delighted to see no clock battery, no clock battery and all working tantalms might replace them anyway, but no Gatorade all over the board. That's awesome. Maybe check it with the Kiwitz. You know what's going on with my Kiwitz? I can't find it. I had it for something. It's probably over here somewhere. Actually, I see some leads. There it is. There it is. 
the Kai Wheats KM601 digital multimeter. My gosh. Is this what you're talking about? Yes, it is. What a fantastic multimeter. So much multimeter for such a low price. I mean, look at all the functionality that you have with this. And it's smart too. It says so on the thingy, it's smart. Um, so anyhow, Kiwitz KM601, there are links in the description and there is also a um, code where you can get a discount if you want to buy one. So uh, in the description, links in there, yes siree. Kiwitz KM601. So much multimeter, such a low price. Boo -doo -boo -boo. Bang. All right, now I'm gonna just abandon this section for a moment, we will come back. I am going to have a look over here because we haven't even looked in this region. Now this is, <laughs> oh, I think there will be tears. Um, I'm gonna just get rid of this capacitor. Uh, this little guy here, and we've got here um, lots and lots of dead traces. We have got rust on these. I suspect these are probably just caused. Look at the state of those traces for far out. By gum. Let's get these caps off. So I think this was, I mean, yes, it's had some battery failure, but I'm pretty sure this computer was stored in a boat shed. Dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Ah, oh boy. What do you reckon? Hey? Eh? Hey? Eh? I want to break free. Nope. 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 And nope. Right, so it's, oh, sorry about the focus there, folks. Okay, so here's the stuff I was talking about before. This is the green. See the green pile on top? That green pile on top is basically telling me that that copper underneath has corroded. That's why it's green, because that's the color of corroded copper. It's green. Um, and so when we scrape this off, you'll basically find nothing under it. Um, I should take a photo of this, shouldn't I? Use it for things. Uh, oh. Okay, where are we? There we go. There we go. Go and take a photo. So, excuse me for a second while I take a photo. Excuse me while I take this photo. Save it. Save it. Save image. Let's try another one. Save. 
that image. There we go. All right. So I've done that. Oh, already one wicket down. All right. Okay. So let's. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of. What do you call that stuff? What do you call that stuff? Iso alcohol on here. Um, you know, I should have. I should have like a squeezy thing, but I don't. I've got a squeezy thing for flux cleaner. And let's do some more scraping. I mentioned Tinker Different today. I don't think I've mentioned Tinker Different today. Tinker Different, what a fantastic online community. TinkerDifferent.com. People sometimes send me messages and say, hey, can you give me some support with it? Can you help me with this? I've, I've got a problem, blah, 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 blah. I just say, jump on a Tinker Different. People on there are way smarter than me. Look at the green. It's nice, isn't it? Hopefully all of this green stuff, this crunchy stuff, see, look at the busted trace here as well. Look at that. Uh, hopefully this green stuff will all come off with a good old Alt Sonic clean. Oh, let's get rid of this guy. It's, this is really bad. I mean, this one is really bad. Another busted trace there and there. What I really do not want to have to do is take this PDS socket off because that is enough to drive a man to drink. Or woman for that matter. I have never sworn as much as I have trying to remove great big sockets. Wine stream, I should do one, shouldn't I? Yes, I mean, I, I, I the, it, yes, I definitely agree with you, uh, Red Leader, that people do, you know, sort of, and in particular, if they're, you know, if, if someone's asking a question about something that I have specifically done in a video, uh, one of the things that does often happen with me, though, that catches me out is I might do a video on something, and during that time, of course, I've spent a huge amount of time studying stuff, you know, learning about things and stuff like that, and then... I, um, and then I publish that video and then it might be like, I don't know, sort of two years later, someone that will then ask me a question about that. And it's like, oh God, I can't remember. That's such a long time ago. I did that video. I, I can't remember the answer to that one. Some of the stuff I retain, but not all of it, you know, um, uh, like equivalent series resistance, that's still in there. Um, but, uh, everything is bad. I didn't even turn the ultrasonic cleaner on today. What a idiot. Ouch. Burn fingers. Burn fingers. Ow, ow. I'm getting tempted to actually order one of those blank 
SE30 boards from Bowl and rebuild one from the ground up. Would suck getting all these things off though. All the through hole things. All these sockets. Um, I've removed pretty much all of the caps now. Actually, I think it is all of the caps. Well, all of the electrolytic ones. There's certainly quite a lot of ceramic caps still on here. But, uh, yes. All right, well, at this stage, um, I am feeling compelled to ultrasonically clean. Um, and then I'll come back and do more manual cleaning. But I sort of feel like I really want to ultrasonic it. They have made new blank boards. Yes, Bowl has. B-O-L-L-E. Bowl. If you do a search for Bowl SE30, uh, you will probably find information from him. Now, he's done quite a lot of things. So he has, he reproduces new hardware based on original hardware. So he made a 68040 accelerator for an SE30. Uh, he made uh, like a little um, processor direct slot riser type board that also does ethernet. Um, just really amazing stuff. It's not cheap, I'm not, but nor should it be. I mean, I, I'm, I don't want to criticize Bowl for his pricing because the amount of investment, time investment he puts in and he ends up producing things that are you can't get hold of them. You just can't get hold of them anymore. So it's like, you know, so he should charge um, money that, that uh, um, makes it worth his while. But uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's done some pretty amazing stuff. I'm just going to add some solder to this so that I can kind of envelope this pin with heat which should make it a little bit easier for getting the pin out here's the pinny out here's the pinny out this one's going to suck because that's a bit corroded still got it though there we go let's see if we can get some solder out of these holes go where I want thank you why do we do this why I've got a 2FX that's sort of in a similar state as well um, which I'd love to get working because I don't have a 2FX. Mind you, God, I've had Kai's for so long. Ah, I've run out of wick. Let's get some more. Um, I've had Kai's here for so long, I almost feel like I do have one. I'm so naughty. Just, time has just been such an issue for me. And of course, the thing is that, like, what I should be doing right now is trying to get on top of all these repairs, but these repairs what i have to do is not very live stream friendly and so i have to actually go in and find other things to live stream if i don't live stream youtube forgets who i am we don't want that do we to the realization the other day that I'm actually incredibly close to the number of same number of subs as uh, Paul Daniels people who don't know who Paul Daniels is he's an Australian who does repair live streams as well but he's he does modern stuff not vintage stuff like I do sorry about the lack of focus but uh, in order for me to focus on this side I would have to do things and I oh, know <laughs> sorry it's my fault Hey, we got it through. All right, so I've got all the holes clear. 
Um, so it really doesn't feel like I've done much today with this board, but I have. Um, I've removed some components, I've cleaned up some pads, I've scraped away some corrosion. Uh, I have scraped away some more corrosion and scraped away some corrosion and I've scraped away some corrosion. And I am now going to, or in the not too distant future, going to ultrasonically clean this. I'm going to let it sit in that cleaner for a long time. So first thing I'll do is I'll get the, the heater nice and hot. Then I'll sit it in there and let it get hot and soak in, get it all soaking in. And then I'll run it for probably about 30 minutes per side. What I'm going to do now, no, I'm not going to stop. No, <laughs> sir. We are going to have a look at the Jav Masters board. Javier. So, for those who, um, who may not know, I did a live stream quite some time ago. Uh, and in that live stream, I had a look at this um, SE30 board. Belongs to Javier. Um, it was sent to me via Joe. And it's, um, it's not good. Uh, it's, it's never been good. Uh, Joe did quite a lot of repair on it, which was great. Um, and, uh, and then I, once I got it, I did some more repair, which you'll see here. I'm just going to change views to the top view. Um, DOS cards with 68K Max. I wish I had one. Now, DOS cards, 68K Max. There was a new bus one, wasn't there? I think really early on, it was only like a, it was a 286 or something. It was something ridiculously slow, but I think there was, um, it wasn't Apple's, Apple didn't make it. It was an aftermarket one that made, was it orange micro or something like that? I can't remember, but there was a, a new bus card that you could put into a Mac two or something like that, that did allow you to flick over into DOS. I'm pretty sure. And then, of course, later on, Apple started doing it themselves. They did it in the uh, 610, I think. Was the 610 the first to have DOS capability? Uh, someone will correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure. Orange PC. Um, power up time. Yeah, I certainly won't be powering up that, uh, that other one. It's a long way from ready. So what we have to do now is, um, if we have a look here, uh, I'm just gonna move the microscope out of the way. You can see we've got some, some wires running across, snaking across the board here. And we are, these have been repairing some data lines. And that's all great, that's all good. They have restored these lines to these on the, uh, on what do you call this, on the thingy, the, you know, the, the thingy here. Um, that's the ROM slot, uh, but, these don't just go to the ROM slot, they also go to this here, the PDS slot. So what I now have to do is I have to do a little patch on wires from here to then relink some of these up to those as well. Um, so uh, in order to do that, we probably need to figure out um, these ones, what they are. We're going to need to get our schematic, and thank you very much to our good friend Elemeno. If anyone knows Elemeno, you'll, he's someone you'll find on the uh, Tinker Different forum and the Tinker Different Discord. If you're ever wanting to check that out, if you ever need to speak to him about this sort of stuff, he's a very, very wise human, far wiser than I am. And uh, he basically took the uh, SE30 schematic diagram that was floating around. It was doing the rounds. It's a genuine Apple one. Don't ask me how it got out. It's a genuine Apple one, but it's, got, it's like faxed or something like that. It's in really, really poor condition. What LMNO did was he took that schematic and redrew it. Now, what is absolutely fantastic about what he did was not only did he do all that, so this is now as a PDF, it's searchable, so you can actually go and search for components on here, whereas on the other one, it was just a scan, so you couldn't search it. Um, so you've got this wonderful new schematic here, but what he also did, and this is what I love, he added this section at the back that I haven't got here. He added this section at the back, which shows the all the main data lines here, uh, coming in and out of the ROMs and stuff like that and the RAM. So you've got, um, I've got a critter walking around on the page. Hey critter. Um, I have to share. 
So anyhow, we don't need this one here. This is not the one we need. This is the one we need here. So we're going to use this un. Um, I think it's this one. Yeah, rom. So, PDS slot running down the right-hand side. Uh, ROM running down the left-hand side. And this is where we have to marry things up. So, uh, I uh, incidentally, I just, I'm going to put the word out there if anyone happens to watch this. I am definitely after a, uh, a DOS compatibility card for one of those Macs. So if anyone gets hold of one or has a spare one and wants to sell it for a not ridiculous amount of money, I would love to get hold of one. So I'd love to have that DOS compatibility. I mean, it is just so stupid to have. They're the two things that I want ultimately is a DOS compatibility card for one of the Macs. And I would really like, I'd love to get like Windows 3 running on or something like that. Uh, the other is I would like, uh, I'm after an Apple IIe card, which I used to own one, but I sold it. I'm an idiot. Um, so um, I did this big sale cull sort of thing in around about 2003. Sold a bunch of E-mates, sold LC, uh, Quadra 605 with a IIe card, various other bits and pieces. I sold a stack of G3s and G4s, like a mountain of them. I had eight or something, uh, G3s and G4s of varying, you know, sort of the G3 blue and white, and then G4, mainly those, what those sawtooth ones. Um, I had so many of them and I sold them all. Uh, for which Mac for the DOS card? Um, I've got a, which ones do they come in? The 610, I think? And what's the other one? Is it this, does, does, Oh, the LC with the 630 or something? I'm not sure. Probably the 610. I'm after the DOS card for the 610, I think. Um, I, think that would be, I think that would be the most logical one for me to have. Uh, if that's my thought. That's my thinkings. Better with rum. Hello there. Yes, whoa, live indeed. <clears throat> LC 630, 7220. So I don't... Oh, Maybe I do have a 7220. That's an all-in-one type thing, isn't it? Um, I think. 7220 is like an a, a all-in-one compact Mac. I've got a 6100 as well. So yeah, 6100. Uh, LC630. I have a 630, but it's in a really bad condition. So, like, the plastic is just... I dropped it. I dropped it a long time ago. So the plastic just exploded. Um, and I was working on it at, at a you know, precarious angle and it just slipped out of my hands and fell onto the floor and just went um, so 6100, yes, I've got a 6100 so 6100 is probably the most logical one I think for um, the because uh, the 630 board fits in like a 580 so could you theoretically actually stick like the DOS compatibility the DOS compatibility onto a 630 and then put it in a 580, or is there not, not enough room? Well, it's a slide-in board, isn't it? Um, most new ones are PCI. Aha! Don't give anything to that Mac 84 guy. No way, Jose. He'll he'll just get it'll get lost in his basement. Don't it, No, you've got to give it to me first. <laughs> um. L630 is a pain in the butt one. Yeah, so, I mean, look, 6100. So if you have a spare 6100 uh, DOS uh, card, I would definitely be interested, Apple's Anonymous. Um, right, now, what are we doing here? We're going to do this repair. That's what we're going to do. Uh, so let's look at these pin numbers. For starters, um, we have to work out which is pin 1 and which is not pin 1. So... Um, I think pin one's at this end. I'm pretty sure my brain recollection says that. We can test it easy enough. Do you know how we test it? With a Kaiwitz KM601 digital multimeter. So much multimeter, such a low price. Have a look at the screen. It's breathtaking. Wouldn't you like to have one like this? Of course you would. Links in the description and a discount code. Now, uh, let's put this into what I like to refer to as beepity beep mode, which is also sometimes known as continuity. So, 
beep, bitty, beep, beep. Now, uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say, so, A0, what, okay, wrong, pin four, pin four goes to UJ2, three, and six. So let's check that. Pin one, two, three, four. See, I can count, I can count. Ah, 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 ah. Okay, UJ4, that's UJ4 there. Uh, that is pin one, so we're saying it should be to pin three and six. So one, two, So maybe not, maybe that's not one. I thought it was. Pin three and six. I, I said UJ2, you idiot. UJ2, not UJ4. Clown. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's good. So we know pin one's down this end. So let's have a look here. That is pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. For any Sesame Street fans out there, God, which is which pin on the PDS? Far out, man. Oh man, I have to figure that out. Huh. If only it was Apple IIe breakout cable. They're good to have. Charlie's here. Hello there, Charlie. I haven't seen you around in ages. Mm -mm -mm. All right. So, uh, pin... I might need to microscope this, I'm afraid. My eyes aren't the best. Um, scope you. All right. So, we've got... Pin one, two, three, four... So pin four, well, we already know that. So that goes to uh, pin 36 of the PDS slot. Now we've got to work out where pin one and two and three and crap is. I don't, I've got no idea. I wonder if he's got a guide for that in here. He's, uh, he's, he's thunk of everything, this guy. Oh, here we go, pin view. Good, 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 sir. You're good, sir. That's what I say, sir. Democracy manifest. And I was, what's the charge, sir? Eating a meal? Eating a succulent Chinese meal? So a little bit of Australian uh, Australian references there. Uh, my apologies to uh, people who have no idea what I'm talking about. What? What? 39. Oh man, this is going to take me forever to figure out where the pins are. Because it, it, goes, like, it goes like this, right? Uh, Alright, I'm going to go around this way. So there, that way, that way. So that's pin one there. One. Oh, it's actually got a label there. 40, 61, 120. So there's 120 pins on this thing. So that it goes from 1 to 40, 41 to 60, 61 to 120. Good old thing there. All right, so that puts it as 1 down here. 1 to 40. All right. So we need this to go to, so pin four is meant to go to 36. So let's, let's count that down. So 40, 39, 38, 37, 36. So that's 36 right there. I'm gonna put a great big blob of solder on it so it stands out. 40, 39, 38, 37, 36. There we go. It stands out now. Oh. Um, 
So Apple's anonymous, given the fact that you seem to be the uh, the singular supplier of so many different bits of bits and pieces. We've already talked about some of the other things that I want to um, get from you, either via cash or by exchange of services. Um, here are a couple of other things on my wish list. I'm after one of those really powerful new bus graphics card. I think like Super Mac used to make them that they actually accelerated um, uh, Photoshop filters as well. You could accelerate Gaussian blur and, and Uncharted mask and stuff. And some of them even had JPEG um, encoding, decoding, acceleration. I used to have one of those. Uh, so, you know, those, you know, really cool, you know, top of the line, super matte graphics cards or rast drops. I'm interested in the really good accelerated new bus graphics cards, if you have any of those. Uh, I am also interested, in, this is a, this is, a, should be a theoretically an easy one. I'm after a PCI Rage 128 um, graphics card, the sort that you would find in a blue and white G3 that you can also put into a G5X serve. Because G5X serve, it needs a graphics card, but it's not AGP, it's a PCI. So, yeah, just run up, run up past you there. Run up there. All right, so I've got a working board here. I'm going to do a quick little test to make sure that what I'm about to do is the right thing. Uh, because if it's not, then I feel stupid afterwards. So once again, we get our little multimeter. We go from pin one, two, three, four, down to pin 36. So 40, 39, 38, 37, 36. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That's good. All right, so now... If I do the same test on this, I think you'll find that there is no continuity because it's a busted trace. One, two, three, four, 39, 40, 39, 38, 37. Oh, we've got continuity on that one. I don't have to do squat for that. So that's great. Thank you, thank you. Angular Momentum, thank you for joining. Good night. What time is it, brother? How long have I been going for? Let's put the old... Uh, Put the old clock up here so people can at least see what time it is here. So I have been going now for an hour and a half. I generally like to go for around about two hours. I reckon I've got about another half an hour to go. If I can get this board finished, then I can pop it in the ultrasonic cleaner and then we can get this. Oh, Joe, are you still here? Mr. Joe? Hello, Joe. 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 If I say his name enough, will he turn up? You know, Joe, Joe, Joe. I look into a mirror and say, Joe, 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 and he turns up behind me. Um, Sad Mac 356, hello there. The Super Mac cards are almost impossible to find, but I may have one. Uh, well, I don't want to take your only one, so. Uh, uh, a TUI card I can help with, but I don't have the cable. Well, here's the one of the good things. I think someone has done all the pinout for the cable, so you could theoretically, if you're good with the soldering line, go and make your own one for the TUI uh, card, I think. Um, or is it is it one of those connectors really hard to get hold of? I think is it the nineteen pin connector or something is really hard or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good night, everyone. Going to watch The Stranger on Netflix. What's The Stranger? I'm going to look that up now. Uh, the Stranger. The Stranger. 1946 film. No, that's not right. Netflix. There we go. British TV series. Oh, I like the sound of that. Um, uh, there we go. Oh, Joel Edgerton. He's one of our best acting ex ex exports. Joel Edgerton is a really good Aussie actor. And, uh, yeah, I, I'd watch anything with him in it, basically. He only he pretty much is only in good stuff. There's another Aussie. Was this shot in Australia or something? I don't know. A couple of Aussies in there. Anyhow. Um, yeah, The Stranger sounds good. I'd watch that. <clears throat> right, enough of that. Let's uh, continue. Uh, we've got to... I should be checking this off, shouldn't I? We've now got another trace repair at 
one, two, three, four, five. We've got one at five. So let's check five. Number five is going to 115. 40. and 20. All right, so we went to 40, didn't we? One to 40, 41 to 80, 81 to 120. So 80, 120, and this one was 115. So let's just check that. That's there to 150. Ooh. Don't you do that. There to 115. Um, 120, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15. We've got continuity to that as well. So that is good news. Uh, I did that as a big fat cable. I wonder why. I obviously had a reason for doing it. <coughs> I need to... I, I'll, I'll have to message Joe. Um, but I was hoping he might still be in the chat. And then it's a lot easier to ask him. And say, hey Joe, do you want me to stick a battery... Um, adapter on here. I'll stick one on. I'm sure he's going to want one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven. Pin eleven. What? What? He is not part of. He's not part of the uh, processor processor direct slot data. So we're all good there. Um. So we'll continue, Just continue counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, So we start from 33 here. 33, 34, 35. 35 is meant to go to 72. 35. Should write something on this, shouldn't I? 33. 33. There we go. Left myself a little note. Uh, right. 35 goes to 35 goes to 72. Oh, wow. 35 to 72. All right. So, let's look at this again. That's 80, 79, 78, 77, 76, 75, 74, 73, 72, 72. Got continuity there as well. How good's that? I'm not sure I'm going to have to do anything with this, you know. I might just test this with a PDS card. I think we might be good. Huh. Never mind. 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 41, 41, 41. 41 goes to 30. Okay, let's... 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, 33, 32, 31, 30. Oh, 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 we got a break. We got a break. Let's test that one out on the other board to make sure that I'm reading this correctly because I do make mistakes quite frequently. Okay. What was it? 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 40, 41. 41. Thank you. Is this you nah, it's all fine, thanks. Okay, so 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. I can't remember. Hang on. I'm just going to make a little mark for myself. Five and six. Three, four, five, six. So it's these two here. 
Alright. Uh. 41. 41. Goes to 30. So, let's check that again. 40. 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, 34, 33, 32, 31, 30. Okay, so we've definitely got a break there. So that's cool. Let's list. We know it needs fixing, so that's all fine. And that's 43. 43 goes to 69. So that's 80, 79, 78, 77, 76, 75. 74, 73, 72, 71, 70, what did I say? 69, 69, there we go, 69, 69 dudes. Uh, fans out of dead classics. Thank you, but no, Charlie, I can't think of anything I would do with those. I mean, fans are thankfully one of those things you can just buy new ones. My mum, it's my wife. She was just telling me that because uh, I've got a lot of bunch of stuff out there related to this ultrasonic cleaner that I'm building, and it's starting to rain out there. Which there's nothing really that can get damaged. I'm just annoyed because I want to work on this thing when I finish my live stream, and I don't want to get wet. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, uh. All right. So what I know now is that a working SE30 is supposed to do a certain thing in a certain way and we are going to check that now so we've got that one there which is for whoop. Yeah, that was interesting that is for oh no that's right this is telling me that the battery's about to switch on <laughs> auto power off sorry i do like the fact that it tells me it's going to auto power off my fluke doesn't do that and so you're just there in the middle of testing, you're testing things, then all of a sudden no continuity, and you think, oh, I found the problem, and then you look over and realise it's auto-powered off, and you didn't even know. <clears throat> all right, okay, 41 should be going to 30. So that's 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, 34, 33, 32, 31. Oh, okay. No, we did have continuity, I just don't know how to count because um, uh, I'm special. Um, and what was the last one? It's 43, I think 43 going to 69. 43, 43 going to 80, 79, 78, 77, 76, 74, 73, 72, 71, 70. 69. Well, there we go. There's nothing more to do. So Joe will be pleased. There's no more to do with this. All I have to do now is clean it and make it look nice. So we're going to get a whole bunch of UV solder mask. I'm going to put that here um, to uh, uh, to hold all these wires in place, make sure they don't uh, uh, get into some mischief. Um, a, a, a repair like this does look pretty ugly and it looks problematic, but it's not. Um, you know, the... Uh, um, sorry, just looking at some stuff. The um, as long as you uh, put some UV mask on it to make sure that they're not going to get damaged and knocked and stuff like that, they're fine. Um, this board is ultimately good to go. As I say, it does need a good clean. There's a lot of flux and stuff on here, um, but once it's clean, we're good to go. I think. Uh, I'm not sure if they're his Ram Sims or mine. Oh, actually, they look like mine. Yeah, they're mine. <clears throat> um, if you're ever wondering how I keep track of that, I keep track of that with my job tracking software and with photos. Whenever a board comes to me, the first thing I do is take a photo of it, and I take a photo of anything that might be attached to it. So if it's got SIMs or DIMs or even, even battery cover, if it's got a battery cover on it, I always uh, um, I take photos of that to make sure that uh, I know exactly how it arrived so that when I send it out, it goes exactly the same back and that um all right so just gonna have a quick look here so look i think i'm actually going to end up wrapping it up because to be honest where i am at the moment everything just needs to be ultrasonically cleaned and i don't like live streaming while it's going because it sounds awful um the se30 which we started off looking at um that uh the ugly the ugly one 
This is it here. We'll just do a quick little recap of this um, before I disappear and head off. Um, go and have some lunch, I think. So um, I have removed a lot of components. Um, I have done a little bit of cleaning. Um, it's, this is now gonna go into the ultrasonic cleaner and get a really, really thorough clean. Uh, and then I'm gonna come back. I'm going to look and see um, what's left. You know, I'll probably have to count up how many trace repairs there are because I would say we're probably looking at minimum of probably 20 trace repairs, maybe more. Um, and then of course we've got to go fix all these these lines, these data lines in here, because these some of these vias are rotten right through. So that means we won't be getting some of the data paths going from the RAM multiplexes to the, the ROM um, and that. So yeah, which is not nice. So anyhow, this wasn't a particularly long one, but that's mainly because um, I kind of got the things done, which doesn't normally happen this way. It's normally the other way around. Um, and so I want to just say thank you to everyone for rocking up. Uh, sorry it's been so long between streams. I will be trying to pace it up a little bit um, when uh, when things quieten down for me with work, um, you know, and try and get everyone's boards back to them and all that sort of stuff. Um, and yeah, so thank you for joining. Thank you for keeping the chat all interesting and lively. I do appreciate that. Uh, I'm just going to jump across here to a different view. Um, and, uh, and I, yeah, I will be hopefully back live streaming, I would say, you know, might even do some during the week, but yeah, definitely next weekend and that. Um, so thanks again, and I will see you at the next stream. So bye now. Yeah.